Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, we talk about all things homesteading, homemaking, and just kind of the journey to a simple, slower, and more mindful life. So today I have a few things in store for me. I'm going to be going around and harvesting some herbs first off because the oregano is looking fantastic right now. And I'm going to harvest some thyme too, I think. And we'll take a look at the rest of the garden because things are starting to grow very nicely and that's super exciting. I also have plans to refill the hummingbird feeders because that brings me such joy. If you don't have hummingbird feeders anywhere near your house or your garden, I would highly recommend it because it just makes you so excited. My family definitely makes fun of me a little bit because we have hummingbirds come to the window all the time but every single time I have to go look hummingbird so it just brings me joy I'll talk about the ratio for the hummingbird food that I make super super simple definitely do not go and buy hummingbird food definitely not the red dye one because it's just not necessary and we all know how bad red dye is and you don't even need to buy a not dyed one at the store either because it's the simplest thing ever to make but I got my little basket and I'm gonna go harvest some oregano. So come along with me. Here is the oregano. Isn't it gorgeous? We got some dill right there as well. But isn't it fantastic? Oh, oregano definitely takes over a space. So do not plant oregano anywhere that you don't want it to really go wild. Same with mint, but it's just so exciting. So I'm going to harvest a really good amount today. I got my little scissors. I'm just going to take a bunch from all over. And put it right in the basket. I use a lot of oregano in my personal cooking. It's my favorite to season chicken and stuff with. I use a lot of oregano in spaghetti sauce, so I'm very happy to have a very productive oregano plant. And I definitely don't mind it taking over a little bit. I'm going to be drying all of this, and I'm not going to need a dehydrator or anything like that or even the oven trick that you may know herbs a lot of the time it's better for them to just dry naturally because sometimes drying them in other methods is a little too intense for them so different ways you could dry herbs in that case is either tying them up and hanging them upside down I've done that before or Another way would be taking off all the leaves and laying it out on maybe like a baking sheet in a sunny place. That works as well. But you definitely probably don't want to start your drying of herbs if you know that it's going to be very humid or kind of just moist in your home or in your place you're planning to dry because that won't work out the best. You definitely don't want your herbs to mold because that would be very sad. I'm going to pull up a weed when I see it. Man, this is awesome. But this is one of the reasons why I say, even if you're super new to gardening or have what you feel is no space at all, just start with something. And a good something to start with can be an herb. With how much oregano I use, growing it instead of having to consistently buy it at the store really does save money. Especially with how crazy the prices of things are getting nowadays. Not only does it save money, but it's just helping to have you learn that skill of gardening. 
even if this is the only thing I grew for myself, it just feels so fulfilling using something you grew from hand in a dish you make. So I highly recommend it. And oregano is definitely a good place to start if you use oregano because it is so prolific. It just wants to keep growing. Same with mint if you use a lot of mint or really like mint. I definitely recommend, even if you're in an apartment, which I was in an apartment for two years and just had a little bit of space, just on a deck or even a windowsill, just grow something. Even if it can't grow that big because of how small the area really is, grow a little bit. It's, it's so fulfilling for your soul and it just helps get you in that mindset of you are a gardener, you are a homesteader. I think I'll leave that harvest there because look how much oregano. That's crazy. Now obviously it won't seem like this much once it's dried. Drying it makes it really shrink. But this is a good amount just for the very beginning of the season. A great start. I'm also going to harvest some thyme too while we're here. Because it is starting to go to flower and we don't want it to stop producing. So we're gonna harvest some thyme. Look how pretty those chive blossoms are. So here's my little herb basket. We got a lot of oregano and a lot of thyme as well. Oh, I wish you could smell this smell of these herbs, these fresh, harvested herbs. Oh my gosh, it smells so good. It really does. And for nothing else, to grow a teensy tiny little herb will just bring you the joy of being able to smell it. So this is all going to be brought in and taken apart from the stem. And I'm going to do the lay it out to dry method. That's what I've decided because I know my family members will not want herbs hung all around the house. Oh, I can't get over how nice that smells. It just brings so much happiness, even just the little thing of herbs, growing it yourself. And just about every time I'm outside, I pop a few mint leaves and crush them up a little bit. Nature's breath mint. <laughs> If you're thinking about growing mint but think you don't really have that much to do with it, one, definitely grow it to store for the winter season because that's when peppermint, minty stuff is is super in season and there's a lot to do with it then. But something I like to make in the summer is actually mint lemonade. And I think that is more of a southern thing. I think that's pretty popular down south, but we don't see it up north very much. I can't remember exactly where I had it for the first time, but when I did, it was like, wow, this is amazing. So there's definitely a lot you can do. Like I said, mint lemonade, and you can put mint in iced tea. Mint tea in general is really soothing on a tummy, but you can add it to a lot more than you might think, and it adds a really nice fresh flavor. It is now a little bit later. I had some lunch and now I grabbed a bunch of just baking sheets and stuff. And I am just going to lay out my herbs in a way that they can nicely dry. So I'm going to take all the leaves, pluck, and kind of sit them out nicely spread apart enough so that they can have a nice space to dry out and that is all done we got three trays of herbs ready to dry so my plan is to just leave them out in a hot place and just let them dry naturally and then I will grind it up and put it away for storage and use 
in the kitchen. Now that that project is done, my plan is to pot up some basil that I just bought. And I also am planning to plant some sunflowers and some wax beans. They're garden bean, they're gold rush that my mom really wanted me to plant. So we're gonna do that. So we got those potted up. We got beans in the middle, sunflowers on the outside. And so that's gonna look really pretty, I think, when it does come up. Now the only other task I know of that really needs to get done is some weeding. Cause as you can see, We definitely got some weeds. Oh look, a little worm. We love seeing these in the garden. That means we got a good garden going. As much as I hate to do it, we definitely have to thin these carrots out a lot if I want to see any carrots at all. I'm so surprised all of these seeds, like look how thick, that's crazy. My potatoes are starting to come up as well. This is my lilac tree that was planted maybe three years ago now and it was so small when we planted it and now it is almost my height nature is just absolutely incredible the peonies are getting close to blooming and oh they're so pretty so right now i am filling the hummingbird feeders and the ratio you want to do for Hummingbird food, super simple. One part sugar, just ground sugar is fine, to four parts of water. And you don't have to boil the water. Some people choose to, but you just wanna make sure it is thoroughly mixed together. And I got mine in a big bowl, all ready to go. So the simplest thing is just doing one cup of sugar to four cups water, mix it together in a bowl, and then you can fill your feeders. Now you definitely don't want to just leave this out for who knows how long. In shade, it stays good for up to like three days. And in full sun, it should be replaced just about every day so that it doesn't go bad. So if you don't have many birds yet, I would not make enough to fill the feeder all the way. I would just make a little bit because you do have to replace it. But with how easy it is, it really doesn't take any time at all. Maybe five minutes. I would do this outside though, because it can get pretty sticky. So I've had my herbs out sitting in the sun for a few hours and look already getting nice and crunchy that's what we want to see when drying doing great so it is the next day and i just realized that i never closed off the video so here i am to do that thank you guys for spending some time with me i hope you come back for the next video because we have a lot in store a lot of things to learn and a lot of ways to grow if you enjoyed, please consider subscribing so that you can return, and I will see you in the next video. Okay, bye-bye! Mm -hmm.